What up, y'all? It's T-Tart, and today we're looking at more of y'all's theories for Pokemon in 2024. Let's go. Nimona Lee Club lore. So this is an interesting one. This is about Nimona and Lacey. When you invite them together in the Lee Club room, they have special dialogue. We know the first layer to this, right? This is how you learn that Lacey's father is Clay, the gym leader. But there's more to this dialogue that's kind of interesting. Pretty much, Nimona and Lacey met at some point in the past, and Nimona's the one who brings up Clay's name. I'm gonna show you the cutscene. Look, check it out. This is really cool. She goes, oh, Nimona, it's been far too long. I don't think we've met since that party, have we? Okay, so y'all have been to a party together? Whoa, Lacey, right? Good to see you. So Nimona remembered her enough to bring up her name. I can't believe you remembered my name from just that one time we met. That's awesome. Oh, no, it's no more impressive than you remembering my name in return. And besides, how could I forget you? You created such a stir, challenging my daddy to a battle right there in your fancy party dress. But you see, there's something going on here, right? So Lacey went to a party with their father, and Namona is at this party as well. And this is at some point in the past. Do you imagine this is some luxury party, right? Clay been selling the minerals, he's rich. And then Namona's family's rich, of course, right? So both of them got stuck going to this rich people party. Yeah, I'm really sorry about that. Once I heard he was a gym leader, I just couldn't help myself. Okay, did, is she actually seven? I forget. But daddy was so pleased with you. Do you know what he said? Nothing wrong with the young Missy who knows what she wants. Haha. <laughs> Yo, shut the frick up, Clay. Haha, <laughs> I'm glad. Clay's very kind. So the reason we even know Clay's her father is because Namona's the one who says the name. She, damn, she really remembers strong trainers. So that's kind of the whole dialogue. Okay, I gotta find the seven-year-old dialogue stuff too. Then I'll get back to your email. This is all the hidden lore. But see, the reason we're talking about this is these could be hints to future regions. So here you go. I had a walk around the terrarium and there were so many Pokemon I'd never seen before. I thought about this a lot in Kitakami too. It's so cool seeing unfamiliar Pokemon just living their lives as they do in nature. Reading about them in textbooks can't hold a candle to seeing them for real, you know? It's so real this way. Man. Exacto, you get me. Though, come to think of it, I guess there was a time where even the wild Pokemon of Paldia were brand new to me. Here's the big reveal. Are y'all ready? I actually moved to Paldia when I was seven. She's not Paldian. So check it out. She'd been to this rich dude party with her dad, probably, and met Lacey there as well, right? So if it's not a rich dude party, that's kind of a hint that maybe she's from Unova. So, think about it. If you get modern Unova games, right? So let's say 2024, the year of Johto. 2025, we finally return to Unova. Pokemon Yin Yin Yang, something that takes place in modern Unova. So like a year after the events of Paldia. Maybe you go there and Nimona is hanging out there because she's from there. So she's just hanging out in Unova. Now, is it really Unova? She doesn't really bring up dialogue like, oh, Blueberry Academy, this whole region it's so nostalgic to be back here, but then again, right? Blueberry's not gonna evoke the same emotions as Unova. I hadn't had a taste of Pokemon battles yet back then. Sometimes I forget what it was like being that age. Oh, so she wasn't seven when she battled Clay. Damn, so that must have been in recent years. I guess it's good to keep having that same sense of wonder as when we were young. That's the end of her dialogue. Now, there's a couple things, right? Nimona does have some Spanish dialogue in the game, doesn't she? She'd be hitting you with the vamos, right? It's weird, right? Because you got, like, native Paldian vibes when you looked at Nimona, as if she was born and raised here. So, the game throwing something like that at you, if we want to have fun with it, could be a hint at a future region. Honestly, makes sense, right? If she came here seven, she could have learned Spanish. Okay, let's get back to your email. I had to pull up all that footage because I wanted to show you a visual for some of the stuff they're going to talk about here. So she name drops him and even states that she met Lacey and him at a party in Unova years ago and challenged Clay to a battle. You know, I guess the feeling you get with Nimona is since her parents are so rich that she probably was traveling a bunch of regions, tagging along with them. It makes you wonder, right? That house that Nimona's in, do her parents even live there? They do say mistress and mister, but they're never there. It's like Namona legit lives in Paldi alone because your parents are traveling all over the place. Anyhow, you can also get a conversation with Namona where she reveals that she actually moved to Paldia when she was seven years old, which means she's from some other region. I think it's very possible she's from Alola as she uses Lycanroc. And her parents are on the board of the Rotom company. And Alola is where we use the Rotom phone for the first time. You know, Namona does give Alolan vibes. Wouldn't it be cool? Not that we're ever going back to Lola for a long time, but if you do go back to Lola and you could interact with like Hala and stuff, they would know Nimona. Maybe her parents or sister are currently over there. 
wow, can we finally get the Nimona big sister reveal? This is all I've been waiting for. You got me looking at the glitterati girl. I don't even, I'm pretty sure that's her, but how are they not going to mention her at all in the Indigo disc? They just disappeared. Keep up the good work. I got a theory for y'all. So, Nimona's parents, since they're on the board of the Road Tom Phone Company, in my head, that puts them in two regions at the top. Because these are the two, like, technologically advanced regions. One is Unova, you know, with the whole America, look at that big-ass Castilia city. The second is Kanto. You see Saffron City, where you got the big Silph Skull building, and that's where they, like, developed the Master Ball, something like that. That's a pretty important part in all of Japan. That's like Tokyo. Then you got the department store in Celadon and the game corner and all there. I know it doesn't look that fancy because we have old graphics for the Kanto games, but if they were to reimagine it, it'd be like a vibrant, bustling city. So if there's any region Amona's from that you could add this like technology race to, I'm gonna say Unova and Kanto. I'm gonna say Kanto, but you can't say that out loud. People gonna be pissed, but hey! Come on, bro. If she's from Kanto, right? Then you go to, you know, our year of Johto this year, which is just speculation. But if we get, let's say, two Johto games, right? An LCA simple Johto remake, and then Legends Johto is the big project. Maybe in the simple remake, right? The same way you had Mina in Let's Go. Freaking Nimona's just hanging out in Johto. You could see young Nimona there. Maybe even get the whole family reveal in little <laughs> Let's Go graphics. What do y'all think? If you could pick a region that Nimona's from that's no one, which one comes to mind for you? I guess it doesn't necessarily have to be one of those super technological regions because it's just where you're born. But if you think logically, their parents would have had her settling down somewhere and they're rich. So it's probably in one of those places. It makes more sense that she's from a different region and went to a rich party rather than her being from Unova in my head. I think if she was legit from Unova, you would have had a lot more dialogue about that in Blueberry Academy. Her finally kind of being back in Unova. Okay, enough about that. Next one. Nimona's missing Pokemon. Hello, Titar. One thing I've been thinking about is Nimona's missing Pokemon. Nimona became champion class one year before you moved to Paldia. How old is she right now? 16? When you first meet her, she starts over with the new team. I always thought that by the end of the game or after the DLC that we'd see her original team. However, it did not happen. Do you think it'll ever be shown or what do you think her original team was? I suppose there isn't a real big emphasis on what her original team is. She's just so crazy that she has like 100 Pokemon in like the same top tier. You see her after you beat her when she's first going all out against you. Right after you beat her, she's holding up extra balls wanting to challenge you again. Which one should I use this time? This is really cool, right? Because after you beat the Hidden Treasure of Area Zero DLC, including the epilogues you get in Nimona in Blueberry Academy. If you look at her team, do you know what she has? Here we go. Pokemon Trainer Nimona, right? So it all depends on what her final Pokemon is. But look, she has Como Infernate Milotic. She freaking found another starter Pokemon in the Terrarium. If she has a Quackquavel, then she has a Decidueye now. And she found a Rabombi from somewhere. And then for Skeledurge, she has a Greninja. And look, she just got freaking Dusk Noir. She's just mad versatile. So you see all the Pokemon I just showed? It just shows what she did when she went to Kitakami. Como, Milotic, Rabombi, Dusk Noir. All of these Pokemon are exclusive to Kitakami. That means that she ran off and explored all of Kitakami. And they're in like opposite corners of Kitakami. That means she explored all of it in the two weeks we spent there and made a bunch of more teams. And so she just adds a couple extra Pokemon when she fights you after. She doesn't actually have the three other starters when you fight her in the epilogue, which means after you invite her to Blueberry, by that point, she runs around and catches those too. It's fun to be able to tell all kind of implied things that happened. Nimona's parents and Area Zero. Hi, T-Tart. Did you notice that when we get the Indigo disc from Gita, she says it was sent from a researcher at Area Zero to an investor? So they poked fun at this saying that the only rich people we know in this game are Nimona's parents or family. So could Nimona's parents or the Rotom phone company be the investors that they were talking about that got the Indigo disc from some Area Zero researcher? Is it possible they use this tech to create the Rotom phones? It is cool to note that when the situation was dire in Area Zero and Gita wanted answers, that somehow she was able to get the Indigo Disc. Maybe it's because the person she got it from is through Namona and closer than just like some random investor who'd never give it up. And yeah, Madus, that's the Namona video. Make sure I'll shank that like button. What region do you think Namona came from? What's your top pick? 
we got four weeks until pokemon day it's officially february at this point you can smell pokemon day approaching will it be jotaro univo we will find out you can email me here and i'll see you on the next one take care